Chapter 238 of the JJK manga came out and we've got some crazy stuff to go over. What happened between Kashimo and Sukuna? Is my goat okay? And what can Yuji possibly do? Well, in today's video, let's talk about exactly that. What's up guys, Rusty Gambler here. And in today's video, we'll be going over all the contents of chapter 238 of the JJK manga. What agendas have been proven wrong or right? Well, let's find out. If you're enjoying the JJK manga right now and want to see more chapter reviews, go ahead and subscribe. After all, it's a win-win for both of us. The chapter starts off with one of the biggest glazing I've ever seen in this manga. And given that we have a character like Yurume in there, this is definitely a feat. If you don't remember, last chapter, Sukuna actually revived his old body once again against Kashimo. And so we enter this chapter with Kashimo analyzing what the hell he's looking at. By using x-rays, the analysis of Sukuna has begun. It reflected upon Kashimo's eyes. Absolute perfection. This by itself is glazing, but the narrator doesn't stop there. Just look at this next page. Even when the hand signs are linked together, a pair of them are still empty. Without being a burden to the lungs, curse spells are still being encanted without pausing. To a Jujutsu Sorcerer, there is nothing beyond competitive edge than having double the arms and a mouth. As a result of Sukuna having such a mutated body, there is absolutely no impairment to any physical function. Before we even move on, holy sh**, Sukuna's body is weird. When I saw this cover of his high and error body, I never even noticed the damn mouth on his belly, literally licking its lips. Sukuna has four eyes, four arms, and two mouths. What the actual f is going on? Back to the manga is then told to us his feats back in the Heian era. With his body and excellent use of the cursed tools he had at his disposal, he completely wiped out the sun progression, moon, and the stars. He also violated the five void generals who were under direct influence of the Fujiwara family. If y'all don't remember, the captain of that group was none other than Uro herself. And remember earlier in the Cullen games when she was shook at 15 Finger Sukuna's mere presence? Well yeah, now we know why. Her entire group got violated by this guy. He drove back the darkness pacification force formed by an elite of the Ape Clan, including Angel and the remaining integrated of the Sugawara family. Yeah, I won't sit here and lie, I literally do not remember the lore at all, so I can't really put my own thoughts into what was just stated. After all these fees are stated, Kashimo thinks to himself after seeing Sukuna's new form. <laughs> he questions how it's even possible, how Sukuna can be so beautiful. <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen is low-key turning into a glizzy goblin competition. Gojo didn't even see the Sukuna and was glazing him in the afterlife. Yurume, well, you know the deal with Yurume. Kashimo was always doing bad flips on it, and even the narrator wants to get a turn. What the hell is going on? As Kashimo calls Sukuna beautiful, he puts his cursed tool in his mouth in order to throw some hands. So he dashes towards Kashimo and Kashimo tries to defend against four different arms. He actually does it for the first literal panel, then in the next one he gets pieced up. He gets thrown by the punches he takes, but as he's in the air, he prepares to send another attack. Just then, he shoots out a lightning Kamehameha with no name. Literally, literally. All he says is, yeah! Sukuna looking at the attack starts chanting. As his belly mouth chants, he tells Kashimo to dodge and he chants himself as well. Then he sends off a huge dismantle, it hits Kashimo's arm and he says that's the attack that killed Gojo, a cut that divides the world. Yeah, not gonna lie, this feat is truly insane. This is the same attack that blissed and one shot Gojo, and it only hit Kashimo's arm while he was immobile in the air. Low key, low key, he's kinda goaded. Sukuna starts talking to Kashimo about his experience with Yorozu. There was an idiot who told me about love. She said I didn't know what love was and that I felt loneliness due to not knowing someone that had my power. I understand what she tried to say, but I got offended that she thought I didn't know anything about it. Well, she was talking with the wrong person. She should have talked about love with you or Gojo Satoru. He then tells Kashimo that it's not that he doesn't know love, it's that he doesn't understand it. But Kashimo is confused on what the hell he's talking about. Sukuna asks him if he said that he's strong, and then they continue to box. 
Kashimo charges up like he did against Akari, but in the next panel, Sukuna Bliss is behind him. Kashimo turns around to use another blast at him, but Sukuna uses two of his hands to hold Kashimo's arms up and uses his other hands to piece him up. Kashimo is now spitting out blood, and Sukuna slams him on the ground. Then he throws Kashimo away, to which Kashimo was about to use another lightning blast. But then he's surprised to see something else, a net of slashes that he literally cannot escape. In the next page, we see old man Kashimo standing where he was when we saw him in the flashback. And while he's standing there, Sukuna gives him a speech. A lot of people may have challenged you, trying their best against you. And they didn't curse you for getting away. Instead, they wanted your recognition. They wanted you to acknowledge them and know who they were. But instead, you just killed them. I wonder how it is to relate to the weak and be compassionate, but if we can't be compassionate, what is it that we can do? Sukuna says that they're loved because of their strength and they reply to that love. But Kashimo was still worried about his loneliness. He was looking for someone worthy, something he doesn't actually need. Kashimo asks if bro was actually satisfied because him dividing his soul into cursed objects really doesn't give off those vibes. But Sukuna replies saying that because he can understand love, he can say that there is no such thing as love. He never expected anyone to meet his expectations and so this is why he adopted the most selfish mindset known to man. He'll eat whoever he wants when he wants, he'll kill anyone who's a burden to him, and he'll play with anyone if they're fun. He only lives to fulfill himself and it's everyone else's problem because they can't measure up to him. But Kashimo after hearing this is still confused. Isn't that boring? But Sukuna disagrees because human life is extensive and brief. Kashimo is finished, but in the next page, we see Hakari's domain barrier collapse and Sukuna says you're finally here. We see Hakari and Yurame falling down and Hakari is smiling. And we end the chapter off with Yuji and Higuruma falling from the sky to engage with Sukuna. Holy sh**, this chapter was insane. Starting from the top, Sukuna's body is... What do I even use to describe this shit? Two extra eyes, two extra arms, and an extra mouth? What? My question is, could this mean Sukuna can use two domains expansions at the same time? I don't know, because I thought to myself, what if bro did the hand sign but two times because he has four arms? Also, this brings up something else I always thought. Back when Sukuna was fighting Gojo without 10 shadows, they did their first domain clash. We saw Sukuna pressing Gojo as he tried to get away. If this was high and error Sukuna in this situation, I'm definitely seeing a vision where Gojo just outright loses right there and then. Keep in mind, this is double the pressing and more physical prowess. And I don't even think it would come to the point where Sukuna gets his brain fight by a limited void because the only reason that happened the first time was because he had to block with both of his hands. But again, this is just a vision. Hayanera Sukuna is definitely not fodder like all the frauds in the community said he was. Kashimo vs Sukuna now, everyone was roasting my boy Kashimo at first, and I really didn't understand why. Heck, I even made a tweet saying I didn't understand it, but then I actually thought about it. Kashimo was complaining about his loneliness in his era. This is a Kashimo who isn't using his curse technique because we know he can only use it once. And so, if he was violating everyone back then, but then he comes to the modern era and he's literally getting killed by Hakari, what does that mean for the sorcerers in his era? In other news, we obviously have to talk about Hakari coming out of his domain expansion. Last week, I had a whole lot of bums telling me Hakari was gonna die, he's not gonna get his jackpot off, and Yurame's gonna kill him before he does all that, blah blah blah. I just listened knowing it was just stupidity. These people were the same ones saying Kashimo was gonna die in one panel. And so Hakari has fought against all odds and he's out of his domain expansion smiling. Oh boy. And finally, Yuji and Higuruma. This was not something I was expecting. I mean, Yuji and Higuruma jumping into action before Maki and Mr. Insurance? Who would have thought? Yuji has something going on with his arms and the claws are very concerning. I don't know what's going on, but what I will say is... We're in for a treat. What are y'all thoughts on the chapter? I give it a good 8 out of 10, nothing too crazy. Anyways, let me know you guys' thoughts in the comments. And I'll catch y'all in the next one.